Hey, what's good guys? Drew with The Soul Broker here. So I'm here with my friend Chase. How's it going, everyone? His Instagram is at Chase underscore Khalees, C-A-L-I-S-E underscore. Yep. And I'm at The Soul Broker, T-H-E-S-O-L-E-B-R-O-K-E-R, and at T-H-E-S-O-L-E-B-R-O-K-E-R-B-K. -E -E <laughs> um, so we were talking, Chase yeah. uh, prepared some questions for me. There's been a lot of comments in the YouTube <laughs> section and we, we wanted a to... a lot of hate comments for no reason. We definitely like, wanted to address reasons. some of the comments. So yeah, 100%. let's get started. Yeah, I, got, I got 10 questions for you, bro. Great. So first question, what inspired you to start this type of business? Um, so plain and simple, what inspired me to start this business is um, I want to say in... Probably like 2014, I really started heavily getting into reselling. My brother was just getting out of reselling and uh, he gave me his book of business. He had this one guy he dealt with in Brooklyn and this was when like Yeezys were in their heyday. Yeah. Like the V1s were like coming out and, yeah, and they were like, so hard to get, so expensive that you just... It, reselling it for great market. really high, like way yeah. more than they are now. So basically he linked me with a buyer well, rather a seller, and I would buy his Yeezys and then I would basically resell them. At first, I was kind of reluctant because he was like, listen, I'm getting out of it, <laughs> like giving me like a silver yeah. platter. He was like, listen, it's gonna be great, like you should do it. I'm like, is there any money? So he had this ledger, like basically like, um, it was basically a notebook he kept with like mm -hmm. everything he bought, everything he sold, and he showed me the numbers. Yeah. And at first I didn't believe it, but my first deal I did was um, with this guy, was a pirate black. I paid 300 and I sold it at six. So kind of after that, I was that like- was the first pair of shoes you sold? Well, I've resold shoes prior to that, but like when I was really getting into it, it like I first, made, so. my first name was Script Kicks. I kind of <laughs> needed to scrap that because <laughs> it had a negative connotation. Like it was like, people said it was drug related, but I only did that because I was in the medical field. And I was like, oh, like people need their kicks. I'll get them to them. Like, like the I'll write the kicks. scripts for the kicks, yeah. you know? Like, <laughs> All right. But great. eventually came the soul broker, but we'll get into that later. But um, So he basically had you just fill in his spot. Yeah, and I always, prior to selling shoes, um, I used to play tournament paintball, and in order to afford it, it was very expensive. I used to buy, sell, trade guns and apparel, <laughs> like to afford the next week's yeah, practice. So the boys, he was into paintball hard. Yeah, so I always, for my whole life, pretty much, I remember even before getting into sneaker reselling, I was like 12 years old. My mom like got like got into my cabinets. You know, moms be like nosy yeah, and everything. 100%. She found a wad of cash and she thought the worst. Like she thought I was like selling <laughs> oh, drugs. Oh my like, son is a coke dealer. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> but I, I explained to her, you know, I was just like yeah. reselling stuff. So it was really natural for me to get into shoes because prior to my brother getting me into it, I was just really collecting and wearing stuff. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question. That, it, it does. Honestly, with me, the first, the only thing I really sold was in like elementary school, I would sell drawings and cards to kids. Like, <laughs> Listen, whatever works. My yeah. brother sold Pokemon cards before the hype. I wish I got into shoes like, like back then. But on to the next question. What things do you look for in the things that you purchase? So, uh, I'm gonna digress a little bit. So, I told you about like when I first started reselling, for a really long period, I would only deal with heat. Yeah. So, um, you know, like kind of how like, you know uh, Sneak City, Tia? Okay. You, you, have, you see any of her videos? No. She no. deals with a lot of heat. So like ma mainly like your off-whites. The your, stuff that you know is going to blow up. Exactly. Like your off-whites, your rare shoes that you don't see every day. You know, like prior to opening the store, I would sell shoes like Tokyo Fives, the Doran Becker collections, the Bin collections. You know, you're wearing DB9s right now. Great pair. <laughs> yeah. Stuff like that. You know, um... Just hyped stuff, like stuff that's like very in demand, stuff that you can't get your hands on. But I kind of moved, I'm still doing that here, but uh, a lot of the bread and butter in this store, and we're filming in the Staten Island location, by the way, the bread and butter here is Retro Jordans. Like Retro Jordans, your Yeezys, you see the whole Yeezy wall here. Um, we sell heat, but it's sporadic. It's like a niche within a niche market. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, like, I think you were saying before, out of the whole easy wall, ninety percent is for guys, and then you got the small ten percent for the girls that usually come in. 
Yeah, so what was the question again? I just want to make sure I answered it perfectly. What, um, what things you look for in the stuff that you purchase? So, um, what do you mean exactly? Like the type of shoes or... Like what specifically of a type of either brand or shoe do you look for? Oh, like what brands do we buy? That you prefer to buy, yeah. All right, so Retro Jordans, 1 through yeah. 14. Um, I'd say any Yeezy, really, the 350, the 380, the 700, the V1, the V2, the V3, mm -hmm. the 750. Um, we buy some New Balances here, some Asics, like only high basics, like yeah. Gel I3, Gel I5, like Irani collabs. Stuff you know that's going to Stuff start. that's good. Um, uh, what else, what else, what else? Foam posits. And that's, um, that's just on shoes with obviously accessories, stuff like that, you buy Yeah, items. so Supreme, uh, Bape, uh, a lot of stuff. Supreme, Bape, V-Loan, um, I've got a bunch of Off-White stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Palace, Off-White. Um, I'm trying to get more into like other brands. My friend had told me like kind of try and get into like Chrome Hearts and Dior and like the high fashion brands. That's, <laughs> that's kind of my goal for like the new yeah. year going forward is kind of like expand out of my comfort, comfort zone and kind of get into stuff that's kind of elevate my clientele mm -hmm. and kind of bring my store to the next level. So, I mean, uh, cause we buy a lot of art. As of you can course. see, like we have a lot of art here, try and dress up the store, yeah. but pretty much any streetwear brand, as long as it's relevant, you know, uh, we'll buy it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome because a bunch of stuff that I see here, I, I just love. I, I wish I could buy all the stuff Tommy. that I see. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could buy all the stuff that I see here, but sadly, you know, everyone's got a budget. Yeah, of course. But um, next one, people look at you as a hype beast or a collector of various brands and collectibles. Mm -hmm. Why should people trust your opinion and views? I mean, um, I'm not an official by any means, and I'm not an OG by any means. You know, I've been in the game long enough where I know my stuff, and of course, there's always somebody that's going to know more than me, but I'd like to say that I'm well-versed in enough things where I know what I'm talking about, and if I don't know what I'm talking about, I'll reach out to, like, you know, some of my friends, like... My boy Chuck Atara owns Origins. If I don't know something, I'll reach out to him. I'm you have an extended knowledge of all these things. I do, but uh, there's still like stuff yeah, like stuff you need to learn. There's stuff like, for example, like Nike SBs. I'm not gonna sit here and say I've always been into Nike SBs because that'd be a lie. Mm -hmm. I recently started getting into it, but I'm the type of person when I start really messing with something like Nike SBs, for example, yeah. I'll really delve into it and like do my research. I'll join like Facebook groups, like the Nike SB page and do my research. Right. And I kind of like have a specific taste. Like me personally, I don't want the shoes that everyone else has. And I'm not gonna buy something just because everyone else has it. Like everyone used to make fun of me, like these I'm wearing the 997S's. I mean, I used to get made fun of in school because I used to wear New Balance, but I really don't care. It's my skis, it's yeah, what I like. 100%. Um, so my collection's diverse. Like, I have a lot of SBs, I have New Balances, I have a lot of good Jordans. But, you know, if I'm not comfortable about something, I'll reach out to somebody that knows it. But I'd like to say, yeah, I'm pretty knowledgeable about a lot of the stuff within this space. So, um, and what? you're not you're not afraid to say that you don't know of about course. something. Like even me, I have plenty of stuff to learn. I'm knowledgeable about stuff like this, but not as much as you. And everyone makes mistakes. I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, I always get it right, or yeah. you know. But for the most part, 99% of the time we do. And if I don't know what I'm talking about. I'll tell the person, just give me a second. Like, kind of like porn stars, where Rick's like, hold on, <laughs> let me reach out to a friend that knows what they're talking about. I'll be right back, you know? Let me call my expert on this. Exactly. Topic, <laughs> so on to the next one. Why should people sell you their shoes for you to resell instead of them selling them themselves? All right, so that's a really good question. It's a big question, so let, let's get into that. So. First off, it's a convenience. We're, we're local in Staten Island, uh, prior to clientele opening, we were the only store here. Um, you know, look, people have so many different options in today's society. You have your GOAT, where you could sell new and new shoes. You have your stock, where you could sell your new shoes. But not everybody knows about that. And you have yeah. different demographics that are into shoes. 
You got the millennials like me and you that know about the StockX, the GOAT, the Flight, the flight Club, the Stadium Goods, you know, your Suplex app. And then you have the old heads that just bring their whole collection in here because they don't want it anymore and they sell it. So, I mean, you know, it's a hard question because at the end of the day, you could do whatever you want with your product, but it's a convenience. A lot of people, like I've met people that sell their whole collection because they don't want anything to do with it anymore and they'll take whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so it really depends. Like you have people that come in, they want top dollar. You have people that come in, they mm -hmm. just want what they're willing to take whatever. But that's why we offer different types of services. A lot of shops you go into, they offer buy, sell, trade, and that's it. So if you come in with a product, let's say I have a Yeezy and I want to sell you a Yeezy, Chase, and I come in and you're like 50 bucks, and I don't like the offer, you're like 80 bucks store credit, and I still don't like the offer, I'm going to walk out. So that's why we offer consignment because I would rather get the business, I would rather have retain the customer, build a relationship with them, then have them walk out the door and then have, have them do business elsewhere. And you know what? To tell you the truth, consignment is a pain in the ass. Because <laughs> you have to do all the work. And my rate, I charge 20% for regular customers. And if you're going to drop Which off like, normal, I heard. Yeah, like yeah. 40, 50 pairs, I'll lower the rate to like 15%. But it's not easy to do consignment because we literally have to do all the legwork. And the percentages isn't a lot. You sell a three hundred fifty dollars shoe, you're making seventy bucks. Yeah. So it's 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 not easy, but I try and accommodate all the customers that come in, and we try and pay as much as we can. And there's a method behind what I offer for certain things. Yeah, there's always a method to anything. Like that that goes into the next question. What's the misconception about resellers in the terms of their profit and sales? So look. Good question too. Not every sale is going to be a home run. There's so many shoes here, like retros, like used retros. We'll buy them at 50, we'll sell them at 100. We'll buy them at 50, we'll sell them at 150. We'll buy them at 75, we'll sell them at 150. So rule of thumb is I like to usually double up on any shoe that comes into the door. Um, I Prior to owning a store, my guy, my northern star, like for sneaker reselling, is if it's a Jordan retro, a good retro, Pay between 50 and 75 and you can always double up on the shoe. Yeah. You know, whatever I know I could sell, sell, the, sell the shoe for, I'll usually offer half of that. Store oh. credit, I try and, so for example, you come in with um, a use Yeezy and I know I could sell it for 150. I might offer 75, maybe 100 in store credit. So like whatever the offer is, I'll offer 20% more in store credit. Okay. So you always have to leave room for profit because with business, there's a lot of expenses. Um, you know, it's not easy running a business. There's a lot of expenses involved in running a business, that, that was, that was a especially, question. especially in New York City. We're not in, we're not in, we're not in the middle of nowhere. We're in Staten Island. And I Williamsburg, would, one yeah, of the most busiest Exactly, of and it's very expensive to live yeah. here, let alone having a commercial space, like living here. I have a one-bedroom apartment. I pay fifteen hundred a month. That's New York. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It is New York. It's so between the two stores, as you said, and that goes into another question. What are your expenses per month between both? All right. So I wasn't going to tell you guys the expenses, but I really want to get into this because you guys are making these comments. It's really out of pocket. I've been trying not to get offended, but it's really frustrating because a lot of people don't understand what it takes yeah, to run a business. Just don't know how much you actually have to do, how much work is into owning a store, let alone two. <laughs> so let's talk about expenses. So a brick and mortar store, this location we're in right now, I pay 2,900 a month. You have a calculator? Let's okay. let's let's do the math, guys, and then you'll realize. So that's rent. Now my employee is roughly, let's say, four thousand a month. Okay. That's sixty nine hundred. Yeah. So that's my rent, my employee. Um, my electric is anywhere between one and three hundred a month. Just add one fifty. Let's average it at one fifty. My gas is one fifty a month. Okay. Okay. Now my security system is billed quarterly. It's a hundred a quarter. My, my 
insurance on all the contents in the store is 400 a quarter. So uh, you'd have to do that. I'm sorry, I'm confusing you. So the, insur the insurance, uh, the monitoring, I said, was right around 100 a quarter. So that's like $30, uh, $25 a month, let's say, $30 okay. a month. And now the insurance is 400 per quarter. So let's say 100 per month. Yeah. So what, where are we at right now? Uh, Almost right 7,000? Right, 73.25. Okay, so tomorrow, so then this is another thing. You have good staff, you need to take care of your staff. My, my, my store manager, Casey, he's my right hand. He's my go-to. Tomorrow I'm gifting him a Sean Cliver SB. Oh. I paid $650 for the shoe, but he's worth it because he makes me plenty of money and I want to make him happy. So right there, you know, I, I gift him stuff all the time. You know, I like to take care of him. So that's extra money. Let me cut. Babe, I'm doing a video. I'll call you back. I'm fine. I'm safe. I'll be back in 30 minutes. Jeez. Fuck. Sorry, I'm putting that out too. So look, my, my employee, my employees are good. Good employees don't come cheap. You got to take care of your staff. Right now we're at what? 73.25. 73.25 for this, this store. Now let's add up Brooklyn. 7,000 a month just for Staten Island. Times 12, that's 84,000 a year. Okay, now Brooklyn. Okay. 7,000 a month for rent. Okay. Let's say 4,000 a month for your employee. That's 11,000. Yep. Um, my insurance policy in Brooklyn is 2 million for the year. So on a $2 million policy, it's 800 a quarter. It's uh, 2,400 a year. That's $200 a month. Okay, my gas is 150 a month. My electric is 150 a month. My camera monitoring is $30 a month. Now we didn't even add miscellaneous expenses into the last figure. Let's and say you're already at 11.5. So all right, so uh, let's say 12,000 a month times 12 is 144,000. Now 144,000 plus what we were at like 70 some odd thousand. 73. Uh, so that's 220000 a year. So that's about a quarter million a year. So with any business, guys, you need to be doing four times your expenses, okay, in order to be a relatively successful business. So if Staten Island, my expenses are 7000 a month, I need to be doing $28,000 in sales. Now, that's just in sales. That doesn't, yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean, like, what you're making in profit. Yeah. So... Once you pay all your expenses, you need to be making some sort of profit. That's the whole idea of a business. So all these people online like, oh, you should pay this, you should pay that. The bottom line is if I listen to you guys in the comments, this store will be out of business and the other store will be out of business. So you, you I got to do what I got to do. Yeah. It's not like you could just um, give the people the price that they're asking because you're not going to make any money. And like you said, the it's not always about profit. You have to pay bills before you can even pay yourself. And we also, there's so many stores that just do buy, sell, trade. They don't do consignment. We offer consignment because we try and accommodate the customers. If we can't come to a deal, you think our offer is too disrespectful, we'll consign the shoe for you. We'll sell the shoe for you. You don't have to deal with people lowballing you on Facebook Marketplace. You don't have to deal with driving out to Hicktown, New Jersey, 30 minutes out of your way, and then the guy never shows up. We sell the product for you. We're more equipped to sell the product for you. So, I mean, we try our best to accommodate everybody, but we're in business to make a profit. We're not a non-for-profit. We're not a charity. We got to make money to, so I could support my employees yeah. and keep the store open. And it's like people think when uh, they bring in a pair of shoes to sell and they take a really low price just because oh, they want to get rid of it or something It's like you don't know their story. They could need the money. They could be like exactly. going into debt. The, People don't know everyone's story. They could just be selling it because uh, I Don't know they're they're plumbing in their house got wrecked Well, you made a, a good point because yeah. the guy with the Grateful Dead he was renovating his home and I gave him seven grand So I hope that helped some 100%. with something so you're right, people, instead of selling other stuff, maybe that's more sentimental and more important to them. Listen, I could say this for a fact, in order for me to start reselling, I had to sell my whole collection to my brother. Yeah. And I literally took a giant loss. But you know what? Now, in retrospect, looking back on it, it was the best thing I ever did 
because look at me now. I have, I've been in business, this store opened May of 2019. I've been in business almost here for two years. I just opened Brooklyn in October. You know, I have a lot of plans in the future. You know, the best is yet to come. So you take the short term L to take the long term W. Yeah. And yeah, another thing true. is, I'm going to say one more thing. You guys hate on me, but I don't know any other YouTuber that's giving you free game. Like, I'm literally giving you the keys to success. Like, And it's not like you're leaving anything out. You're literally showing your whole process in buying and selling all the any shoe that or accessory that you have. Like, you don't cut any unnecessary thing out where it's like some guy comes in and he's trying to sell a pair of shoes and you... Uh, cut out how much you're paying for it or how yeah. much you're going back and forth between each other. So people should honestly be able to learn from that and see how to resell themselves. That's the goal, Chase. I mean, <laughs> the thing of it is, there's also other YouTube YouTubers out there. We're not going to name any names, but people only show you what they want to show you. So when they're offering the high, they're not showing you the low bowl. So let's be serious. Let's be serious, please. Yeah. So, when people come in to sell you stuff, what's a bunch of the things that you would turn them down? So, first and foremost is a condition of the shoe. Mm -hmm. So, I tell my employees, if you wouldn't wear the shoe yourself, do not buy the shoe. Um, now, there, how do I say it? I want to say this the right way. So there is always an exception to the rule, uh -huh. um, and it's a case by case thing. So let's say, for example, some guy comes in with a hundred pairs of shoes. I'm not gonna ruin the deal because two pairs are beat. You know, like I might buy 98 pairs of really good shoes and get two beaters, but in my experience, if a pair comes in, it's really worn, you know, let's say a Jordan 4, for example. You know Jordan 4 is the bottom of the shoe, mm -hmm. where the toe is, you got the stars. stars. If there's no stars, you it's know, the toe box, drag. Toe box is creased to hell. You know, there's holes in the sock liner. The shoe smells like corn cob feet. You know, like, <laughs> I'm probably going to pass. Like, 100%. Also, I don't know why anyone would try, sorry, I don't know why anyone would try to sell a pair of shoes that smells. People do it. Has a bunch of dirt and everything on people it. People do it. You would have to basically just refurbish the whole shoe yourself. Like, that's not how you do things. You just chuck them. True. I mean, you could donate them. You could write them off on your taxes. I mean, honestly, the box also comes into play if it has a box or not. Yeah. We do buy shoes without the boxes, but mostly it's a condition. Also, the shoe. We kind of spoke about it earlier in the video, certain brands. I mean, if somebody comes in with Payless shoes, I'm not buying them. The consignment also gets people, you know, I've had people come in here with like wedding dresses, like thrifted coats like from 1970 like I mean I don't really buy stuff like that I'm not a thrift store I'd like to say I have high quality products in here the aesthetic of the store is very nice you know I'm not buying guitars and like stuff like that so you know certain things I buy certain things I don't it really does depend on the brand the condition. If they're fake or not. <laughs> True. Everything also good. Yeah. It's good that you mentioned that. Every shoe that comes into the store, we spot check it. We have our own process. We have a black light at hand, at hand all times. A lot of the fakes now, they uh, stamp either the label or it has like some sort of unauthorized marking. You know, uh, a lot of Jordans, the stitching will yeah, you glow. You see where the stitching was. Yeah, the stitching will glow, or you look at the build of the shoe. So there's a lot of things that we do when we check out a shoe. So yeah, of course, we're not buying fakes here. Yeah. We're, we're not we're not like some Canal Street like dealer that we're selling bootlegs. Like we don't do that. We're here for the long term. We want to sell authentic products. We want to keep our customers happy. We want to keep them coming back. Yeah, and that's that's what I look for. Make sure they're legit. Me personally, I don't like buying used shoes, but if I get it for a good price and they're not too visually used, then I'll buy it. Yeah. Like, Rick, I got the, Tra the Travis Force from him. <laughs> they, they weren't bad at all. And you have to clean your shoes, guys. A lot of the shoes that come in, unless, I'm not gonna sit here and say clean every shoe, because it depends on the price. Like, if I get it for very low and you know, I, I'm selling it at a low price, we want to just move it quickly, we won't clean it. But certain shoes, like the other day, like we put out a YouTube video, 
I bought like those Aqua 8s, the Chrome 8s, mm -hmm. the Cool Gray 9s, the Liberty 10s, um, and uh, I think it was another pair. I had to clean all the pairs. Like the guy must have had them in his garage. They were dusty, but it makes a difference. Yeah. Cleaning the shoe. Hundred percent. It's, it's perceived value. Cleaning. It's perceived value. The person picks up the shoe. It smells nice. The soles look clean. Yeah. It's anyone who comes in to buy shoes, clothes, anything. They eat with their eyes first, and if they don't look pleased, then the appetite. Exactly, goes. and that's why we kind of. I love to buy used shoes because the margins are better, but most of my stock here now is brand new, like 80% of what I have, maybe 90%. What would you recommend if someone was wanting the most money for the item that they're selling? You kind of went over it, but more in depth. So uh, presentation is key. You know, I would definitely lace up the shoes. You stuff the toe box, you clean your shoes. I mean, cleaning them goes a long way. Like. If you buy a used shoe, even as a reseller, you buy a used shoe and you don't clean it, you're leaving meat on the bone. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, to be greedy and make the most money and don't leave profit for somebody else, but if you could clean the shoe and it boosts your margin 20, 30%, you know, that's the way it should be done. Like, those breads I got, I paid 100 bucks for, they didn't look really good, but when I cleaned the hell out of them, I was able to yeah. turn 100 bucks into 400. I made $300 on the shoe. It's... All about what you see. You have to clean them. You have to lace them up. You make them look new. Even take out the insole. If there's hair on the insole, take a vacuum. Clean the insole. Scrub the insole. With these DB9s, I've had them. I've had them for over almost two years now, and I've worn them at least 40, 50 times. They look brand new. Reselling tip, guys. If you have Yeezys and you're selling them or you plan to sell them, wear them without the insole, especially your cream whites. Don't come in here telling me you have a brand new cream white and then I pull out the insole and there's a big dirt stain with your foot. So <laughs> that's a no-no. Definitely wear them without the insoles. It's little tips and tricks you can do. <laughs> I, me personally, I don't really sell shoes. Like I said, I only got those few pairs to resell because just why not? But I keep any shoe that I buy, I keep for myself. And I would keep them until they're destroyed. But I like to take care of my shoes. Keep the boxes. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people in throw my out closet. their boxes. Why do you throw your boxes out? <laughs> in my closet is just a tower of like 40 boxes. Even if you use a drop front containers, keep the boxes in the attic. Oh. Because when you go to resell them, it's important. Yeah, and I even keep the containers for the clothes figures too. Yes. It's like you never important. know. If you really run into a problem where you need the money, you literally are going in debt or you're about to lose your house or something. And you have some expensive, like uh, the Gone figure, the pink one, like eighteen hundred dollars. Yep. Bro, put that back in the plastic, um, heat seal it, sell it. That's a finesse. <laughs> no, no, so with my cost figures, I carefully open the top. I didn't even it. think of that. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> So what are your future plans in the direction that the store is going? So right now my hunger is insatiable. I'm never content. You know, like I'm, I've, I've been raised by my pop to work hard. Anything you want in life, you got to go out and get it. Um, I worked full time in the medical field. I own this store outright. The Brooklyn store, I am co-owner with my brother Dylan. Um, you know, like you were saying earlier, I'm here all the time, every day I'm here. You know, I live and breathe this stuff. I don't mind working full time Monday through Friday, do my 40 hours, and then come here every single day and work. I mean, right now we're filming this video, what is it? Yeah. You know, almost 11.30 at night. You know, I've been here all day long between Brooklyn and Staten Island. It's not like you don't work. You know, so my goal is to have a soul broker in each of the five boroughs, maybe expand to New Jersey, maybe go to California or Florida. You know, I want this to be larger than life. And like, I, like Mr. Beast, he just, he's crazy on YouTube. He, get, he makes so much money off of every video because every video gets over like 20, 30 million views. So however much he spends, he makes it back. And he opened this, he opened 300 burger restaurants and that was honestly the smartest decision he could make. Cause in that one, like 
the one time he opened 300 restaurants, that one day he's made millions. Yeah, and it's good that you brought it up too because I was just thinking about this today, like using my knowledge from what I did here and like basically I know what it takes to open up a business in terms of the aesthetic and how to lay out the store. As you can see, everything is organized here. It looks neat and clean. I feel like I could use my skills to translate that into building more stores or maybe venturing into other lines of business. Like um, another one a thing that I was like just thinking about was maybe like making like, uh, like my mom's a chef, maybe making a restaurant or like even doing like a food truck or something like hey. something, something oh, wow. like good money. something cool or even like I was just thinking today about like paintball buy sell trade because <laughs> I used to, like we were talking about earlier in the video, there's this one website, pvnation.com. I used to go there and I used to do the buy sell trade there. So, you know, it kind of got me thinking. I literally was thinking today about like other businesses I could do, but right now I'm really focused on the sole broker, growing the business, you know, structuring our business better, you know, kind of doing things to put us in a better position. Um, trying to like, I don't want to say make it more corporate, but like I've been working on like an employee handbook. Yeah. So like, you know, like sometimes you forget what to tell people <laughs> or like how you want your yeah. business run. So like recently I wrote a word document, like what I want, like the rules and regulations. So I'm trying to make things more official and simply I just want to grow this as big as I can. Like I could explain business as like having a living, breathing thing. Like almost having a kid. Like right now, both stores are my, my babies and I really want to see where this could go. Like even the Staten Island store, you look around, it looks like it's done, but there's so many things, like I'm just looking here that I feel like I could improve. You know, yeah, it's nice, but you know, I'm always looking for ways to make things better. And I'm really excited to see where the future will take me, especially for Brooklyn. We open in October. We're right across the street from Supreme. We're in a prime area. It's a great area because anyone coming out of Supreme, they see, oh, shit, you got all the Yeezys. You go over there. Exactly. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done in Brooklyn. It's a nice store. You walk in. I'm, I'm content with it. But, you know, like we have a really prominent clothesline here. You know, we hang like all the more expensive pieces. I want to say the clothesline here is like 20 foot long. I want to incorporate that there. I want to kind of like fill out the empty space a lot. You know, in this store, you see like we have a lot of skate decks, a yeah. lot of like Ron English a art, cause figures, a lot of cause. Supreme. We have a lot of that stuff there, but now I'm like kind of like filling out the store. Yeah. So. As you can see, like all the shelving here, my father's a plumber by trade. I'm pretty handy myself. I actually, my father taught my employee uh, CJ how to cut and thread pipe. So the Brooklyn so store, they, they helped you. He well, helped. Well, he well, helped, well. and we built all the displays ourselves. So it's visually pleasing. I like seeing stuff like this where it's not, oh, they went to IKEA and bought a bunch of shelves. No, they literally yeah. built the store. I try and stay away from the slap board. Nothing against anyone that has slap board or uses slap board. It's just. I want to make something that looks very neat. Um, I want it to be an experience when somebody comes into the store. I want the customer to stay in here for as long as we can. And, uh, and honestly, most of the customers that come in here, they stay in here for like an hour. You, I, I've stayed in here for multiple hours exactly. on multiple occasions. You know a store is not good when you could not walk in and see it and don't want to walk in. Yeah. I've, I've been to stores where I'm like, okay, I'm good. I just walk <laughs> I don't want to waste my time. You know, like... And it also, it's also the, the um, what's it called? The, the service. Customer service. Like I said multiple times to you, I like coming here sometimes not even to buy shoes because you guys are great to talk to, too. You guys, every time I come in, hey, how's it going? What's up? Uh, the first time I came in, oh, Casey was like... Oh, how would you guys uh, find out about us? What, like? And that's that's. I not, don't get that. That's not a coincidence, Chase. So, look, I work in the healthcare field. I'm a people person. I've always been a people person. I train my employees to greet everyone that comes into a, the store. Ask them how they found out about the store. We want to know where our customers are coming from. We mark it on Google. We mark it on Facebook. So we want to know where our customers are coming from. 
Um, also, we want everyone to feel welcome when they come into the store. There's yeah. nothing worse than going into a store, not saying, hi, how are you? Um, do you need help with anything? What size are you? Are you looking for anything in particular? Nothing's worse than walking into a store and being ignored. Yeah. You know, we know stores that do this. Look at my Google reviews. That's all I would have to say. <laughs> you know, I'm going to give an example. I'm only 20 years old. I don't have all the money in the world. Yes, I've spent a lot of money on shoes and hype stuff like off-white and cars and everything, but I'm 20, I walked into a Rolex store, and my mother and sister were just like, why, why would you do that? They're just going to ignore you, they're going to be like, oh, who, who's this schmuck 20-year-old 20, 20 kid thinking he could buy a Rolex, wasting my time, I'm not going to... No, what I got was, hey, how you doing, sir? Can I help you with anything? And I talked to him, to him exactly what I wanted, what I was looking for, obviously not buying yet, but they brought me to the exact watch that I was looking, I, I showed you, yeah. uh, the Sky Dweller, and they let me try it on a $50,000 watch. It's not just because I was some random kid they thought they were going to get money out of, it's because the customer service there was just good. They like to treat their customers like they would be treated. Well, honestly, I compare it to going to a good restaurant, maybe the best restaurant you've ever been to. If the service isn't good, are you going to go back? Hell no. So the <laughs> bottom line is everyone, we treat with respect. Um, even sometimes customers come in here and they're disrespectful. But the bottom line is we don't disrespect anybody. We treat everyone how we want to be treated. I was raised to be that way. So, you know, the customer, we're nothing without our customers. So. Mm -hmm. With that said, we try and provide them with the best experience possible. Yeah. Um, also, I value like certain things. If we buy it at a cheap price, we're able to give it to the customer at a cheap price. Mm -hmm. And that also is customer service. Yeah, like there's a pair of Air Max uh, 90s. I saw only $10 above retail. Yeah. So and they're brand new. Like you can't always be greedy. There's certain things you got to do to keep the customers coming back. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'd like to say my staff, I'm very proud of them, Casey, CJ, my brother Dylan, myself, um, you know, we all do a good job at, you know, customer service and we, we, we're open for, you know, any suggestions, if anyone has any comments or any constructive criticism, definitely let us know. But, uh, yeah, customer service is the most important thing in business. 100%. 100%. Yep. And you would rather keep... An actual storefront than going strictly online so another good question there's a lot of people I know that only do online and yeah in today's times especially with COVID it's not easy to open to keep a business open you know how many businesses have closed due to COVID it's it's really crazy and Honestly, personally, I think it's better to do a brick and mortar because you have a physical location where you can run your business operations. Mm -hmm. It's more legitimate than running an online store, in my opinion. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, it's more legitimate. You could put your name on it. Um, your customers could come to you. I mean, you don't have to do... You, you, you know how happy I am that I don't have to do meetups anymore? Yeah, granted, I do house calls if somebody wants me to buy out their collection. But you know how many times I've went to a meetup and the person doesn't show up and I'm just sitting there wasting my time. The store is so much better. You have your set business hours. You have cameras. You're protected. It's secure. And with a storefront rather than a warehouse where you just buy online, they see the shoe in person and really see if they want. To. True. And then you made a good point because... We spoke about it earlier. It's about an experience. Having being able to have a storefront, you could kind of like kind of make the experience for the customer. And also, we were talking about margins. Like, let's pick up the shoe for example. This is a Yeezy 380 Onyx. If you look up the shoe on StockX, it's going for like retail or under retail. I've sold multiple pairs of the shoe at three hundred fifty dollars. Now. It's the convenience. People come to the store, they look at the shoe, they like it, they'll buy it. Yeah. Not everyone knows Especially about Especially if there's great service. Exactly. Not everyone knows about StockX or these other platforms. And no, we're not ripping people off. We're providing them a good service. We're providing them an experience. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like where else can you go? Like you don't have any experience with StockX. You click a button. 
Yeah. Here you got to try on the shoe. I'm literally, like if, if those shoes, I was selling you those DB9s and you took them off the shelf, I'd grab them out of your hand, I'd unlace the shoe, I'd practically put the shoe on your foot. I'm making sure the shoe fits you perfectly. Yeah, every, I mean, time, every time I walked in here and tried to buy a shoe, like you guys let me try it on. Even shoes that I wasn't interested in buying. You know what? Look, we're not bougie here. We don't wrap our freaking shoes. Oh no, you can't touch the shoes. Or, you know, don't judge anybody. We're not bougie in here. None of the shoes are wrapped. You could try on whatever you want. You know, it's all about the experience. It's all about serving the customers. And we try and do our best. And we're open to suggestions. If you guys feel like we're not doing something right, you can let us know. And, you know, we're, you know, somebody told me the other day that they sent us a DM and we didn't respond. We read it, but we didn't respond. So I spoke to my employee about it. So we're not perfect. We're trying our best to do the best we can mm -hmm. given, given the situation that we're in. You know, and... We try and do the best that we can, really, really do. Well, that's everything you've said is great. I think it's probably cleared up a bunch between people like sending hate and everything. Yeah. I hope that people who sent that hate like get what it means to be um, a store owner and you know have to do all this stuff because you. Like you said, you have a full-time job, but you're, you've are you been here, you've told me this, you've been here every day for the past year. Yeah. Like, you, it's not like you don't work. I do. And also, when you have to support, most people in life, they only have to support themselves, and if yeah. they have a family, they support their family. In a business, you have employees. You know, like, <laughs> my employees are like my family. Yeah. I want to make sure they're able to support themselves, and... I need to make sure I can make money so I can support them. Yeah. So it's it's a lot of responsibilities and you know, I, I love it. I'm not complaining at all. It's the best thing I ever did. I think this is only just the beginning. There's a, this is not where the story ends for us. Mm -hmm. And you know, I wanted to thank you for your time. You took a lot of yeah. you know, you took a lot of time out of your day to do this, so I appreciate it. I'm hoping yeah, no maybe problem. in the future we could do more of these videos. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Everyone go follow Chase on Instagram. It's at Chase underscore Calise underscore. C-A-L-I-S-E. Appreciate you. Thank, Thank you, man. You, man.